The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. And Jesus gave us warning of the signs for the end. And you cannot say you do not see it. You cannot say, oh, it's certainly not on its way. You cannot say, ah, oh, carry on as normal and do not consider nor worry. But do not fear, because though you go through tribulation, be of good cheer. For Jesus overcame the world. So Matthew chapter 24. See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You see how Jesus tells you these wars must come to pass. They have to. This is what must happen. Do not be deceived. Many shall come in his name, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but you're not to be troubled by them. Do you see what we're seeing here, what it's telling you? It's time to take heed. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Well, you know since 2020, all the pestilences that began, all the plagues that began, and you know all the earthquakes that began in diverse places. And how 2020 was the world record for recorded history of earthquakes in a year. And then in 2021, between January to March, those three months beat the year of 2020 for the record of earthquakes, where 67 volcanoes all erupted in unison on the earth at the same time. And now look where we are today. Everywhere has some sort of weather. Everywhere has a regularity of earthquakes. Everywhere has a regularity and an increase and a growing in famine and food running out. Everywhere has people struggling to afford food. And they are saying it's going to increase next year on the price of meat yet again because a new law will be imposed that will bring restrictions on the practices in the preparation of meat suppliers and slaughterhouses. And you already know about all those places that just randomly kind of burned down and blew up and everything else that were farms and factories and processing and holding places of food. Everything is running out. But what does it say? These are the beginning of sorrows. And you're starting to see all these nations are now starting to turn against God and to hate God. And you're starting to see a famine of the word and a falling away from the word and people giving ear to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You're seeing people being selfish and unloving, unkind, unhonest, unmerciful, ungrateful. And what does it go on to tell us? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because your iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because of the level of lawlessness, people are becoming more and more cold towards others. People are finding it easier to hate other people on various reasons. People are starting to hate based on opinion that differs to their own, on complexion, on gender, on race and religion. And you're seeing an increase in people hating a certain nation. You know what I speak, just as World War II was done before is done again, nothing is new under the sun. And yet people do not study, but they are quick to speak and have their opinion. 
because they are led by their feelings and their emotions, but they forget that the heart is desperately wicked, and who can know it? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You are to endure unto the end. Don't let love wax cold in you. Keep loving everyone as yourself. Keep being the good Samaritan. Keep treating everyone the way you want to be treated. Keep doing unto others as you would do unto yourself. Keep loving everyone. Keep following Jesus. Keep loving your Father with all your heart, mind, body, strength and spirit. Do not give up because he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Call upon him and do not stop. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. We're in a day and age where knowledge has abound, just as Daniel says. Everywhere there is a screen, there is a technology to speak information. And this word and missionaries and so forth have gone across this earth to spread the word of God. Look where we are. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then that them, doesn't say my people, or my followers, or my believers, it says let them which be in Judea, so he's telling you the place, who they are and where they are, when they see the abomination of desolation, the one that will set himself up as God and to be worshipped as such. He proclaims himself as such. So you know what's coming. And it tells you where it's going to be. And it tells them where to go. And it's the mountains. If you know the history of Old Testament, you'll know which mountains these are. As I always tell you, study your Bibles to know. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days because it will be a rough time but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter neither on the sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be do you know why because they still are dear over there and it will be a harder time because of those seasons and those days and in those places you have to understand your history and what a place is like. Do know it. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Have you ever seen someone wave his coat and then a row of a hundred people fall down? Behold, I have told you before. Where or if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Reminds me of that time Benny Hinn said Jesus was at his sermon. He was there invisibly, he told the people, and as they came to walk towards the stage, each one, one by one, would fall down onto the floor and faint. What does that say? Believe not if someone tells you he is there. For wheresoever the carcass is there, will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. People theorize, but Jesus told you exactly what to look for and what to expect and where to expect it and what people it would be. So immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You see the word heavens is used, plural. That's another study. But like I say, know your Bibles. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. You know what to look for, and what to see, and what to expect. 
Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and put a forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. It's growing nearer, it's getting closer. You need to be studying, you need to be praying, you need to be prepared. Don't let the world distract you so much. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. None of us know when it's going to be. All of those date setters, you do not know. Only the Father knows. And all of you listening to date setters still, after all the dates that have not come to pass so far, start listening. No one knows but the Father alone. He is the only one that knows this day and time. But as the days of no so were, be also the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. He warned. 120 years he warned and they never listened. And then he got into the ark and it began to rain. Now they wish they had listened, but it was too late. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye shall know not what hour your Lord doth cometh. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. We don't know when he's coming, so keep watching. Keep being ready. The watchman warns and keeps watching and keeps warning. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Be the faithful servant, because what's it say next? But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand how important it is to be ready? How important it is to not get complacent? How important it is to not get lazy with your walk? Because the next chapter the parables that go directly into it to warn you. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now they didn't know when he would come, so they have extra oil, so they're prepared for his coming. Because if you're waiting and tarrying, you're like, oh, he's not here yet. Well, I better have more oil so I'm prepared so I can keep my light lit. And the five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. You see, they didn't know how long the oil they had would last. So they took them all with them. It's constant preparedness. Now, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us in you. You but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see, they can't give unto you. It's just as when it says, I believe it's possibly Ezekiel, where it speaks, where even if a man such as Daniel was to live 
in the end time. He could only pray and deliver himself because it would be such a wicked time that a person can only deliver themselves. You need to be on the narrow. You can't be the lukewarm because they are vomited out. You can't be those that God has something against because he says, repent or I will fight against you. Likewise, you shall all perish lest you repent. These are scripture. These are verses. And there are those that find this offensive. But if it is spoken, should we not listen? Should we not hearken? Or should we just ignore and be offended and say, Oh no, give me the bubblegum gospel. No, don't be the foolish virgins that were not prepared. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Imagine all of a sudden it's now the end. The sun has finally gone dark. And now people are, oh, oh, we better get, get right. But he's already on the clouds. Are you really going to wait till it's too late to get right with God? Are you really going to waste your chance unto the path unto salvation, unto everlasting life? The roads of gold that are as clear as glass where all the precious stones shine all the colors of God's creation, where every tear is wiped away and death is no more. Will you really waste that because you was too lazy and you enjoyed the world far more than you did your studies in the Bible, that you enjoyed the latest television show than you did your time in prayer in your secret place? Don't let the door be shut, just as it was in the days of Noah. They wanted to escape, but they couldn't. It was too late. Now only God's wrath remains. Afterwards came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man travelling into a far country he called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. He's called these people to work, and he's gone away for a while. They don't know when he's coming back. So the one with five goes off to work with the five he's given. The one given two goes off to work with the two he's given. And then there's the one who was given one. God knows what you can handle. He won't give you more than you can bear. But it's up to you to use what is given. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So he's doubled. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So the one that received one, he just hid it. He did nothing with it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with him. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one, the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou sowest not sown, and gathereth where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. So he's made an opinion of his Lord. Oh, I think you're a hard person. I think you sow where you don't even sow, and reap where you don't even expect to reap. And he's afraid, so he does nothing. Those that deny the sun before men the son shall deny before the father. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. They could have helped. They could have helped others to do as they did, but they did not. Instead they just hid and did nothing. They were lazy. 
Don't be lazy. So unto Christ. Seek unto him to be your light. Look to him to guide you. And if you have power to help, then help. Do what good you can, while you can, because you can. If you can be brave enough and encouraged enough, your own ministry's out there, helping those in need, like those in small ministry, and those in greater ministry. They go out there and they feed those that are hungry. They build churches. You have missionaries that go out there building churches around all the nations that have it not, so that they may know God and Christ crucified. And what happens to this one that did nothing with the talent he had? Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have ten. For unto everyone that hath shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now you're starting to get the consistency and the importance of being ready and knowing what's happening and why it's happening and not being confused by what's happening. You need to be prepared and ready, don't get lazy. Don't get slothful. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from goats. We'll all have to stand before him one day, brothers and sisters. Mockers and scoffers, you also Unbelievers, you also. Lukewarm, you also. Unsure, you also. Me, as well. Every single one of us that exist upon this earth will have to stand before him. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat, and I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, and gave and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When we saw thee, in, thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So they, these are the ones who goes, You did all these things for me. And they're like, When did we do them for you? We don't know when this happened. And he goes, When you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. This is why through the epistles it continually tells you about, Don't tire of doing good. Overcome evil with good. Always be loving and kind. Compassionate, bearing one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And they helped any that had need. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. And shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. They could have done good, but they didn't. And they didn't consider it. They didn't look to the importance of it. It's doing what we can while we can because we can. It's why this ministry even exists. It's why I do what little I do. It's barely a drop in the ocean. I see myself as no better than one talent but I'm not burying it, I'm not hiding it. I am doing as much as I know to do, as much as I am led to do, to reach who I can, while I can, because I can, to preach Christ crucified to all, to keep us all focused on the Lord, so that none of us forget Him, to help those in need while I'm able, to persevere and to endure through my own afflictions, the little scurriers above and to the side of me on each side. 
And exactly on cue, they start to scurry. Why am I not surprised? The Lord gives us strength to bear the burdens. But just because we go through burdens and hardships and trials, we must not grow tired in doing good. Just as the epistles say, And I myself am most grateful for my fellow brothers and sisters that keep me in prayer, so that I can still do more and reach more, because I know the digital age will not continue much longer because of this passing of this new pact, digital AI governance, and the day of the famine of the word that is to come. But it is to live a life dedicated unto our Lord and Saviour Jesus, and I deem to be faithful, I deem to be humble and obedient, though I not be worthy of what I do. With all energy and with all strength I do do, even with lack of good rest I still do. Even where there are those that mock and scoff I still do, because it is to always put God first and not ourselves, because all need Christ, and it is to love everyone as ourselves, and to put others above ourselves. In all humbleness and meekness, as Christ did for us, we do for them. If we are to follow him, we are to walk as him. I pray you all stay encouraged and realize as these times do grow near, do not tire. Don't become as the unwise and foolish virgins. Do not become as the lazy, evil servants. Do not give up. Do not lose hope. Keep praying and keep seeking the Lord. Be encouraged and strengthened in Christ. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. <laughs>